Eric, where did your camera go? <laughs> I'm going to be off until you introduce me. Oh, okay. Hi, are we live? Let me check. I'm going to be off until. Okay, we're live. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to the KTO and Eric now meet and greet. I will be moderating. I'm Connie from Dive Studios, and this is brought to you by Korea Tourism Organization and King Sejong Institute. So yeah, let's welcome Eric Na. Hi, Eric. Hello. Yes, I think everybody heard that, but yes, I'm here. <laughs> Hi. How is everybody? Nice to see you. Um, yeah. Thanks for being here, everybody. My name is Eric Dom. In case you just stumbled in and you have no idea what this is, this is a live stream that we're doing with KTO, the Korea Tourism Organization and the Kim Sejong Institute. And I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yay. So we're going to first, I'll introduce a little bit about Dive Studios and then I'll get into the cool Korean cultural stuff. But yeah, Dive Studios, we now two years old like almost exactly two years old. And we started off as a podcast network to, yeah, Dive Studios Cup, uh, to amplify Asian, Asian American stories. But now we do a lot of different things, but all in all, it's to just kind of like give some space for the Asian voices and stories out there. So our first podcast was Debak Show and Eric was is the host actually. We're on episode 125. So Eric, what do you think about that? Um, it's kind of wild. It's really, really wild that we have done 125 episodes of a show that we started on my kitchen counter with Brian mumbling a song as the jingle. But uh, we are at 125 episodes and it's thanks to people like yourselves who are watching this uh, and our listeners, our weekly listeners from all over the world and the incredible guests that are joining us. And so, you know, we've had some incredible artists on the show in both K-pop and pop and across all sorts of genres. And it's it's only getting bigger and it's only getting better. And, and so I'm really excited to to be spearheading such a cool show with such a cool team. Um, and, and to kind of add on to what Connie was saying, you know, Dive Studios, we have been, we've been around for, I guess like just around two years. And uh, we've been making a lot of cool podcasts and uh, digital online things, you know? You know what I mean? And so hopefully you guys are enjoying it. If you don't know, you can go check out our socials where we have a lot of ridiculously hilarious, sometimes embarrassing TikToks and Instagram reels. And our YouTube has a lot of wild videos. So um, yeah, that's what Dive Studios is and that's what we're doing, you know? Yeah? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I saw um, you made a new jingle. How long did that take you to make? Uh, it did not take very long. <laughs> but sometimes the most basic and the simple things are the best things. And it's, it's, a, it's a very, very simple. Teba, teba, teba. I think that's it. It's a debak show. A, and that's what it is. Simplicity. You know, it's the name of the game. Nice, nice. So I guess we can start talking a little bit about, I mean, K-pop because it's K-pop Daybox show. Um, I know K-pop is like super popular everywhere now. Um, I mean, it's always been popular, but especially with like BTS, it's everywhere. Um, how do you think it's like, what sets K-pop apart from like Western pop and other pop genres? Why is it so engaging, intriguing to everyone. Why is K-pop so engaging and intriguing to everyone? Um, I think this is something that um, Korean production value, sorry, we're gonna get real technical, real quick. I know like people are like, it's beautiful. And like, it's, you know, all that, but we're gonna get real technical for a second. I really think that it is the production value that K-pop is able to provide in terms of time, in terms of, you know, the, the effort and the meticulous preparation and the delivery that is provided from every level. So from your 
your music, your songs, your production musically, and then you have your visuals, you have your fashion, fashion, you have the colors, you have the choreography, the music videos, and then also kind of everything that comes around, like the universe of it. So the merch, the fan communities, the the conversations, the interactions. I think it's it's so many different things that are all coming together under this one genre of K-pop that allows people like myself and fans and listeners and viewers and fandoms to really connect and be a part of something that isn't just a song, that isn't just an album. It, it's so much more than that. And I think that's the, the real reason, if we break it down in terms of why K-pop has become such a popular and also recognized genre in its own right across the world, right? Am I genius? I think I might be. I might be. I very well might be. Sorry. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, K-pop is like I think a big element are it's like the audio visuals and like how it has literally every different genre of music in one song. But also they have like a huge trainee system, right? So how is your trainee experience? So, yes, I mean, I feel like a lot of one of the, the big things when people uh, think of K-pop is like the training system. I was not a part of the training system, to be very honest. It just I was part of a TV show and that's how I got discovered. Um, and that was like my training experience, just being on TV every week and not knowing what was really going on. Uh, that forced me to kind of develop my skills very quickly. And then I think my actual training process beyond that was like the process of actually preparing an album and preparing to go on stage. So it was like two months, one month of me just rushing through everything. And um, but on the flip side, I've always kind of been jealous of people who had like a training period because um like I, I had a period in my early career where I felt very unprepared because everybody else could do like backflips and like speak, speak like nine languages and learned how to act and, uh, and, you know, people would be flying across the air and I'd be like, I'm just going to stand with a mic stand and like play with my, my hands. So that was why <laughs> I was always a little jealous, but I think for me, I had, uh, other, I guess, talents that I could use that allowed me to stand out. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, there's also a lot of like Korean music shows. That's like a huge part of the industry. Um, do you have any like funny experiences backstage? Um, I mean, I feel like doing the music shows is like a, it's really exhausting. Uh, it's really, really exhausting. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Something just popped up on my Zoom. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, people probably don't know that it's really, really intense. So, like, if we are doing something, like, for example, Music Bank or whatever, we're up at, like, 5, 6 a.m. to go to the broadcast station or the network and we are doing dry rehearsals. And then we do, uh, there's like a bunch of people who are doing, what is it called? Like, which is pre-recorded. So when they build the sets and they uh, make all the crazy set designs, so there's a time period for all of them. And then after that, there's camera rehearsal, which is when you have to come back and you rehearse for the camera people and then there's the actual live thing and then after the live thing everybody waits to say goodbye or thank you to like all the producers and everything so it's literally like minimum a 12 hour commitment but we do this every single day of the week it's from monday through sunday sunday through saturday whatever you want to say there's a show a music show every single day and so for x amount of weeks that's all you're doing. And in between during like the rehearsal breaks, you're going to do like a radio program or like shoot something for two hours. So it's a lot of, a lot of a lot, but I guess when, once you get past like the first week and you kind of are in the system and you've, you've gotten com comfortable on stage, you tend to relax a little bit and you get to see a lot of your friends 
and a lot of the other groups and you get to hang out and go grab coffee or go grab a snack um, pre-COVID. And that's probably like the best part of it, just to, to be able to see a lot of people and catch up and, um, and also get to perform. So yeah, that's what awesome. I think. I'm going to look at the chat now to see if there's any questions because there are a lot of messages. Okay, let's do it. You guys got any questions? Yeah, send us your questions. Send us your questions, send us your questions. Yeah, I do have that body roll though. That's what Tina says, and I agree. Um, right, we are waiting for some questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and pull them up into the YouTube chat and we'll answer some of them. In the meantime, there are some other questions that are here that maybe I will try to answer. Um, oh, here's one thing that's like interesting about the music show. So is there's always, you know, there's like a seniority thing, right? There's a seniority thing and there's like a junior thing. And, uh, <clears throat> typically if you're a junior, you take your album and you assign it to all this, the seniors, all those humbes who are on the show that day. Um, and then you go with your manager and you knock on the door, go no, no, no. And uh, somebody on the inside, their manager observes like, yes. And then be like, oh, Eric's here to like say hello to uh, XYZ group. Can you say hi? And they'll be like, oh, well, they're getting dressed or, oh, they're getting ready. Or it's, hold on, like they're going to come out and see you. Or it's like, okay, come into the room, whatever it is. Then it's like an awkward, like, Anyaseo, I'm Eric. This is my album. I like your new song. I'm your fan. And then they awkwardly say like, oh yeah, like great job, blah, blah, blah. And it's like a bunch of like cordial greetings. And then I just feel very, very embarrassed and I, and I leave um, and I say, thank you. And then there's, because now I guess I've been in this for nine, 10 years now, um, that there's the younger groups, cause I'm a senior now, too many. And they come and they go, and it's usually groups and it's going to be from what like five to ten people and i'm like oh hi and then they go they do their massive really intense greetings everybody has her like no 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 like a hand signal and they all like yell at me and then i'm like oh hi and it gets really awkward they're like oh here's our album I watched you when I was like five years old and I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. And then I say, thank you so much for the album. And then I give them mine and then it's really awkward. And then I say, thank you. And then I leave. So that's, that's nice story. Really underwhelming, but that's, that's what happens. And I, it's every single show it happens. I appreciate it, but I'm always like, what? Like, this is it's very awkward. I'm just an awkward dude, you know? All right. Anyways, fine. In, um, in the meantime, I, I'm sure we got a bunch of questions. So let's look at some. Yeah. G, uh, is it Gita P? Uh, hi, Eric, a huge fan here. What are you going to do after the pandemic ends? Any plans or places you want to go to? Any things oh, you want to do? Um, well, here's the thing. To be very honest. I, uh, I don't know if like, if the pandemic like if COVID will ever be over. I feel like COVID is something we were, we are all going to have to learn to live with. And hopefully, you know, the incredible first responders and the scientists and all these people can continue to develop incredible medicine and vaccinations so that, you know, we can try to manage it as much as possible. But whenever it is possible and we get back to our new normal or whatever, we're going to call it really hope to be able to travel. I think like many of us want to, I really want to be able to go to festivals, not only to perform, but also just to like enjoy it. I don't know if you guys have been to festivals, but it's one of my favorite things to do because you go with a group of friends, you see a bunch of different artists uh, and good food. 
you can if you drink you can grab a drink and it's just a really good time but that's what i'm really really looking forward to um and i i miss just like being able to like without having to worry just like give somebody a hug or shake their hand or say hi and like just hang out in like a restaurant and and that kind of stuff so I think it's those types of things that I think not just me, but a lot of us, right? We, we really want to be able to do and hopefully we can do it soon. Um, yeah, that's like my, my biggest thing, I think. Great. So do you have like a specific place in Korea that you've never been to but want to go to? A specific place in Korea? Um, honestly, okay, so in Korea, I've done like Korea travel shows and I've done a bunch of different variety shows. So I feel like I've been to almost every place. But the one thing that I have, that I will say is like, I've been to so many places, but because it's always been for like a TV show, I've never really had a chance to like, just chill out and enjoy it. It's always been like on camera, enjoy it. So it's like, okay, we get there. Okay, hurry, we have like 30 minutes to shoot this. And you're gonna act like it's like, you just had this incredible experience. I'm like, okay, not that it's not a good experience, but it's, I've never done it at a, at a rate or at a pace where it's like really leisurely or it's like a vacation. So um, I would, I would love to do that at some point, like Jeju. I feel like I've only been usually to like shoot something or for an event, um, which is an Island South, like South off the Southern tip of the country. And then Jeonju, which is my mom's Koyang, which is like the place where she was born and she grew up. Um, has really good food and I think it has like a lot of it has like a like a Hanok Mal kind of thing which is, Hanok is like an old traditional Korean home um, and they have a lot of great food and it's beautiful and so I'd love to go there sometime and just walk around and hang out I think the last time I went I was there for like a few hours for like a college event uh, said hi to some of my cousins and then I had to come back up so yeah Cool, cool. Okay, one more question before we move on from the chat. Sure. Priscilla asks, how's the difference between living in States and in Korea? What do you, which one do you enjoy better? Oh, that is such a hard question. I think they are both awesome. I think they're both incredible for different reasons. Um, I think Korea has this energy about it that is unmatched in many places of the world. Um, whenever I had friends visit me in Korea from like New York, they would come and be like, man, I thought, you know, people say New York's a city that never sleeps or New York's like the center of the world. And they'd be like, but this soul feels like the center of the world. And there's like so much energy and nobody ever sleeps. Um, and I think I agree with that. It's, it's a city and it's a country that people are, you know, incredibly like trend forward. They are always thinking ahead. They're always like very hardworking and very um, active in every sense of the word, very active, which I think is great. And it, it really fits my personality on this, on the flip side, like, you know, in the States uh, I've lived mostly in like Atlanta where I was born and raised, I went to school in Boston. And then I, I spent a lot of time in LA. It feels a lot more relaxed and chill and, slower in general, which I think I enjoy and I appreciate um, because the way I am, I'm like always go, 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 100% all the time. So when I have an opportunity to be in the States, it allows me to kind of take a breath of fresh air and like recalibrate and refocus. And I'm forced to slow down because of the rate at which things go around me. And so I don't know if I have like, I like one better than the other, but I think it's more of, uh, it allows me to have kind of a balance. And I, and I understand this is, sounds like the most privileged, obnoxious thing to say, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm very blessed that I spend time in both places pretty regularly. And so for me, it's, um, it's like a good balance of having like incredibly high energy and then not incredibly relaxed, but like somewhat relaxed where I can still take time for myself um, so yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, Korea's great. <laughs> um, well, if you 
if you guys who are listening really want to go to Korea and figure out like what should I do there, what are some cool events, uh, Korea Tourism Organization has a website which I'll link uh, at the end of this live stream. And yeah, they just kind of post all the biggest updates on like cool events for foreigners, just in general, like like language courses, things you could do in Korea. So definitely check it out. Yeah. So yeah, Eric, I would definitely when, check it out. Yeah. I'll say this: Korea does a great job of making things very, very accessible to like visitors, to people who are traveling here, who are coming to study here. Um, they they make it very very accessible. I think, um, and they're always like really really wild promotions going on. So like shows and concerts and certain things only for like travelers and visitors and tourists um, and like a lot of deals. Like one thing I realized is they always, I feel like for the past 10 years, they're like, like 2021, it's the year to visit Korea. But they were also saying that 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I was like, that makes very little sense to me but i realized the reason that they they probably promoted that was because every single year they have so many cool promotions and really great programs that people can partake in that allows them like that allows visitors to really enjoy korea as much as possible and to maximize it so i think um the korea tourism organization does a really really great job of pulling together all these resources and programs and making it really accessible for for people who want to visit korea and i know like also during covid because it's not easy to come here and not easy to travel um they're doing a lot of things online such as this event but they're doing a lot of other things on the website so definitely check out the website there are a lot of really cool opportunities and things that you can you can engage with on the website. So shout out to Korea Tourism Organization for being so awesome. See, Natalie says, I did the free concert with BTS in 2015. Isn't that wild? You could have seen BTS for free in 2015 if you were on just hanging out on the KTO website, probably. Actually, I don't know the details, but that's that's pretty pretty wild. Yeah, what the heck, free concert? <laughs> well, also, if you wanted to learn Korean language, um, King Sejong Institute, which also helped create this event, they have textbooks, they have courses, uh, definitely you guys had the Sejong Culture Academy. And so, yeah, there's courses online and offline. Definitely check it out if you want to learn Korean. Yeah, that's like the one other thing that I was like, oh, I should have taken advantage of this like before I got to Korea is like the Korean language thing. Um, the Kim Sejong Language Institute, Kim Sejong, King Sejong Institute, uh, they have language courses and they're also part of, of this event. And I know they have a lot of free classes on all sorts of different things um, that are available in person and online as well. Um, but let's, let's say this, um, learning Korean, I think, has become such a great tool. Like any foreign language is a great tool. Any foreign language is like a, a really, really great thing to pick up, um, if not just for fun, but for also for practical reasons for when you, and if you wanna travel or if you wanna work in a different country or a different culture. Um, and I've done shows where, I did a show where I had to travel um, all over the world. So we've done like, I'll tell you one story where I was just like shocked. I was like blown away. We were shooting a show in Estonia um, and it's like, it was freezing. It's like January, February. I never thought in my life I'd ever go to Estonia, but I'm in Estonia and we're shooting a show. It's me and like a couple actors. It's, it's a show called the uh, wizard of nowhere or wizard of Oz or something. It was on NBC. But when we travel, we always have like local coordinators, people who are there to help like, the camera staff and the producers and, and writers um, because we need to get around. They need to get around and figure things out and get lodging and stuff. Get to Estonia. And the coordinator there is an Estonian friend. I don't know how old she was, it doesn't matter. And she was dead, like completely fluent in Korean, like better than me. And it blew my mind like better pronunciation, 
better word choices, was working and fluently in Korean. And I was just blown away. But she had learned Korean through online courses, I believe, and through dramas. And I was shocked. But then I think she came to visit Korea. I don't think I was in Korea when she came to visit. But um, through that experience, like, I think she's she obviously worked for a TV broadcast company abroad. But then I think she also did a bunch of things here. Um, but it's it's uh, definitely a really cool thing to, to pick up a, a couple extra languages if you can. And if you are interested in learning Korean, definitely do it through the Sejong Institute. They have a lot of great resources, a lot of great classes. And um, yeah, would highly recommend it. And then next time we could just speak purely in Korean and maybe you'll be better than me. And then maybe you can coordinate. I don't know, I'm now just making things up. Sorry, I'm just gonna stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Eric, when you first started learning Korean, what was like the most embarrassing mistake you made? Oh, I mean, I made so, so many mistakes. Like I don't even like, it's to the point where I just, I just blacked out of my head. Uh, Cause I would make mistakes all the time. Like imagine like I was on a TV show all the time, all these different shows, but I did not know what was going on. So I would like laugh when I'm not supposed to, but like, I thought it was like, supposed to laugh and I'm like ha ah, and they're like talking about something really dramatic or tragic and I'd be like oh sorry I'm gonna pretend like that didn't happen um it's one of those things that happens very much I would always say like the wrong word or I would mispronounce something I also did a lot of interviewing uh not only like western celebs but a lot of Korean celebs and I would always mess things up and so I felt bad all like I always felt bad but I will say this all that messing up and all those difficult moments and periods, that's what like forced me to learn faster and better and to get better and to improve. So even though it was really embarrassing and really difficult, I actually appreciate it because it, it helped me improve my Korean language skills. We learn from those hard times. We do. We definitely we made a lot of mistakes times. learning Korean. Okay, so we actually got a lot of questions before the live stream through our Google form. So we selected a few for you and I'll just read out from Wynn Taggart. How do you know when a song is finished and ready to be released? And do you have songs that just aren't done yet? Oh my gosh. Um, how do I know when a song is finished? I feel like I know a song is finished when I don't know what else to do with it. And I'm like, I like, there, like, what else can I do? Like what, or I get it to a place where I'm like, this just feels good. This feels right. This feels clean. This feels good. I'm fine with it. Let's go. Um, it's something that I'm going through right now with my, my album, because we're in the process of fine tuning songs and starting to get into the mixing and all that kind of stuff. But it's like such a long, painful process for me. Um, but that's, that's, that's what I think at the end of the day, I'm putting out a song in my name as an Eric Nam art, like album. I want to make sure that I feel good. I feel great about every single song, um, that I'm putting out into the world. So it just takes time and it's a painstaking process, but it, it's what allows me to make the music that I do. I just saw a question earlier in the live chat, but they were asking for any hint on your new music, any sort of hint, but don't joke. Um, well, actually, um, what time is it? It is not out yet in the States. It is now out in Korea and Asia. There is a song that I remixed with uh, Vault Boy and it's called Everything Sucks. And it's like one of those big, <laughs> it's a song that's like kind of blown up on TikTok. But it's, it was like, everything sucks. Just kidding. Everything is better than it used to be. So uh, depending on where you are, you can stream it now. And there's a music video and all that coming out, uh, I think, today, tonight. I don't know exact times. But it's coming out. So that's like immediate. My personal album, all my songs are like chosen. We've written them. We've recorded them. We're in that process of like, 
really picking up, like I will sit there for hours and like listen to a single like word or a sound or one harmony to just sit there and be like, is this right? Is this not? It's almost like it's too much. The, the nitpickiness that I have with, with my, my songs, but I don't know. I, I know that once I put it out into the world, it, I can't take it back. And so I want to make sure I get it right. But we have uh, a bunch of songs. They're almost ready. You will get something this year, at least something this year. Uh, I can't tell you more than that, but it is coming. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. And I hope you are too. And, um, it'll be good. It's gonna be great. Yay. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. You know, yeah. it's gonna be fine. And that leads to Jen's question. What has been the most memorable part so far of making the new album? I think this is the first time that I've taken such a long time to write an album. Up until this point, typically I'll write an album in the matter of like two or three writing sessions. So when, when, you know, before COVID, I would be just flying around traveling all the time for different projects. So whenever I got to LA, I would just spend like three, four, five days in this, in the studio, just like cranking out. Sometimes we do two sessions a day uh, just to try to get songs done. Um, but this time it, I it's taken a much longer time, partly because um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't, I wasn't sure what kind of sound and what kind of message and what kind of story I wanted to tell. Um, because I, I think in order to be able to make music, you have to have a bunch of experiences. But as you know, we've all been cooped up for the past year and a half. Um, and the only thing that I've personally been doing is like really uh, building things with the team at Dive Studios and Mindset. And so uh, I feel like almost every day, with the exception of some days where I was songwriting and recording, I was at the office writing, working, um, building things. And it, it was, it, it has been an awesome experience, but just because we've been trying to balance that side of the work, the, the dive studio side of the work as well with the album, it's just taken a lot longer, which frustrates me, which, rush for, well, blah, 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 which frustrated me because my personality is really like, let's just get it done, like push it out but it forced me to really take time to think about what I was writing and to think about what I was creating. So I think it all, it worked out for the better and it, it allowed me to balance both my creative side and then like the non-creative side. Um, and so I, I'm really excited to, to, to get it out to everybody. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Like there's a lot. So I worked on it for a long time. So there, it's only right that there should be a lot of music coming. So keep your eyes and ears peeled and I'm going to need y'all to like stream it and download it and get the album and everything because it's, it's, I am now also, I guess this is the first time I'm saying it out of my own mouth. This is very awkward. Um, I'm now like a, a fully independent artist. And so this is a fully independent <laughs> artist project that I'm doing, um, which is great, but also terrifying. Um, because I've never done it like this before. So I'm just being very honest. It's, 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 uh, it's a little nerve wracking. So I need all the, all the support and love and help that I can get uh, from, from my peoples, okay? Y'all are my peoples. And then um, just going back to the first question that you asked uh, about, I think it was like, do I have a lot of songs that aren't done yet? Yeah, I literally have like probably over a hundred songs that just aren't finished. Uh, some, I just try it. I'm like, this isn't it. Let's just leave it. Others were like, oh, this is great. It's not ready. We're not going to put it out. It's not the vibe I want to go for. So we're just going to hang on to it. Um, and so it's, 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 a, it's always a process, but just being honest and being not afraid to throw it away and start over. That's also another thing. Sorry. Okay. Next. Um, just funny thing. Carolina Sepulveda says, Eric, now I'm future leader of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking on no, the I don't want that. That's too much. pandemic. Yep. Um, Marinelle, she asks, what is the most important life lesson you've learned slash realized from this pandemic? 
Ooh, what did I learn? Life lesson from this pandemic. Um, Sheesh, hold on. Okay, let me get into my meditative sitting stage. Okay. Um, What did I learn about this pandemic? It is to, I think it's to kind of like let go and be okay with not being able to do things as planned in any way. I think uh, there have been so many things, so many projects, so many opportunities and so many moments where you want something to work out a certain way and it just won't. And it's beyond your control and it's beyond something that you can even do or change or fix. And not being upset or down about it, but just being like, okay, it's just the way it is. Let's move on. How do we change it or how do we fix it or how can we learn from it and how can we grow from it but accepting that and being okay with it i think is something that is probably a much healthier mindset and a much healthier approach to life and so that's probably one of the biggest things i learned i mean the other thing is to really um be okay with like being in tune with like your emotions and how you feel and how you process things. It's just, you know, just be okay with it. Like everything that you're going through, everything that you feel is valid and everything that you um, are going through is real. Just be okay with it, accept it, just learn from it. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's probably like the biggest things that I've learned right now that I can think of. I'm sure I've learned about other things. And if you haven't been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Get vaccinated and wear a mask. Okay. Yes, please get vaccinated. So we're almost near the end. Um, If you guys have any questions in the live chat, please, please share them now. Yeah. Hey, Infinity Channel asks, are you practicing your Spanish? Uh, I have nobody to practice my Spanish with. You know, no, como se dice eso en español? No tengo nadie con quien yo pueda practicar mi español. I don't know if that made sense. I don't know if that was right. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. We'll never know. Danny, Danny Camus asks, what is your favorite song of all the ones that you've made? Oh, that's an impossible question. I have no idea. I have like no clue. It's I've I've probably I think how many songs have I written that have been published now? I probably have like 20, 30 songs that are like in the public, like that have been released. And then I have like literally a hundred that aren't released. That's an impossible question. So I'm just gonna say all of them are my favorite. I like all my children equally. um let's see okay. what else i've seen this question multiple times now hannah lee asks any advice for first year college students going out of state Ooh. um i would say enjoy it don't be afraid you're gonna be fine you're gonna be okay and um don't worry too much just enjoy it like i think back on college And it was like one of the most fun, exciting times of my life. I tried so many things. I was part of like probably 10 different clubs and organizations. I tried everything from like being like student newspaper to I started a service trip. I was on student government. I sold flights for JetBlue. I sold phones for T-Mobile. I was a waiter at the faculty dining hall. I uh, tried out for an acapella group and I failed. I didn't get in. I, um, I did like so many different things. I studied abroad, definitely study abroad. You could study abroad in Korea. Hey, yeah, um, if you want. So just don't be afraid, don't limit yourself and think of the next you know, few years, four years or whatever, how long you wanna to go to college for as a, as a great opportunity to not only learn like in school and like through books, but like learn through life experiences and learn about yourself and, 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 um, 
don't be nervous. Just, just really take it and make it whatever it is you want for yourself. So good luck. And I'm really excited for you. That's going to be really cool. <laughs> um, the Wander story asks, what do you usually do every weekend? And are you still working even on the weekends? Yes. I usually work on the weekends. I think I've gotten better about it in LA where I, I, I tend to work at least one, like a Saturday or Sunday, like, but not both. I will take one day to be like, I'm not doing anything. I will sleep in. I will just eat. I will go for a hike or go to the beach or go for a drink with friends or something. But yeah, I don't know. I think the other thing is like, I work both Korea times and US times. Um, and then also I work creative. And so we work weird hours all the time. And that's just like part of the way it is. Um, so I don't think it's, I'm like very lucky in the sense that a lot of the things that I do, I really enjoy doing. So it, sometimes, yes, it does feel like work and sometimes I don't want to do it, but oftentimes it just feels like, huh, I'm so like blessed to be able to do what I do and, and to say that this is a job for me. Okay. And then we have a question from Ellen. What is mm -hmm. the best and worst thing about your job? Oh, man. I think the best thing is that I get to try so many different things. Um, musically, creatively, like I get, I can write and, and put out whatever I want and, and be as wild and wacky as I want musically on like the TV film, all that side, like because of the nature of TV shows, I'm allowed to travel the world, to see the world and go to places that I never would go to otherwise. Um, and to, to have experiences like, okay, back to like Wizard of Nowhere, like I was in Sicily, Italy, working at a tuna factory. Like why, like I would never have imagined in a million years that I would be doing that. I was in Sri Lanka picking tea leaves. I, uh, I did another show where I went to the most Southern part of the world in Argentina to make a documentary about penguins. Um, so I think that's like the best part. Like I get to really experience fascinating things um, just due to the nature of my, my job. And, and so I really, really do love that. And then also on the music side, touring and performing, like it's, it's, it's a, it's a feeling and it's a experience that I, I'm so grateful for and uh, something that I really look forward to getting back to very soon. Wink, wink, hint, hint, huh, huh, touring, concerts, festivals, get vaccinated. The worst part is I think it's partially like self-induced, um, but because I am very blessed to be able to do so many things across so many different mediums and platforms. I often feel like I'm always short on time and very busy and overwhelmed and like just workaholic. Um, probably wouldn't have it any other way, but that's just probably like the most tiring part of it. The other thing is I think there is naturally a stress that comes with being in the public eye and being a public figure and um, always being accessible in some way or form and the stresses that come with social media, like it is all very real and it is all very taxing. Even if I don't think to myself, oh, this is tiring, like sub un subconsciously, I think it has a toll on my health, um, probably like my mental health the most which then affects my physical health. Um, so I think it's always been like a fine balance of it all. Um, but learning to better understand how I feel in certain situations and cope with it has been something that I've been very actively working on. And I've, I feel like I've been okay for most of my life with it, but there are moments where I get really overwhelmed. Um, and so, yeah, I think 
that's probably like the hardest part. I don't want to call it the worst part, but probably the most challenging part. You do a great job. Last question. Farah underscore Daisy asks, what advice do you have for me becoming an aspiring tour manager for K-pop concerts? Maybe this is a question for Eddie, but you might have some insight. Um, gee, well, I think tour managing is a, is a very particular job. Um, when I think of tour managing, it's a lot of work and it's very tedious because you are responsible for everything that happens on tour. And so from booking flights to booking the bus, to making sure that everybody's on the bus, to making sure all the luggage and everything is there and arrived and all our sound and our lights and our crew, everybody's taken care of, hotels, buses, flights, all forms of transportation, visas, um, expenses, to logistics, to handling merch and like customer service, and also being there for whatever an artist needs. It's like a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Um, but if, if you are a very organized person and you like the energy and the tension and like the stress of like, some, because some people really thrive in that type of environment. I have a tour manager who's incredible, like can do everything. He will jump off the walls and like do it all um, like a Superman. And, and I would not be able to function on tour without him. Um, but Knowing that, I think it's putting yourself into a work environment or a situation where there is a lot asked of you and being able to meet, not only meet, but exceed that expectation and that ask the best you can. Because anybody can do, like being able to do like the bare minimum is just the minimum. Like that's just given. I think that's just any job. Like if you're doing the minimum, then like, great, you're doing the minimum. But like, Honestly, anybody can do the minimum. It's what can you do beyond that that sets you apart, that makes you like a really, really attractive candidate to run a tour, to manage a tour. Because I think it's when you go the extra mile that people get really excited about working with you because it's like, man, this person thought ahead and was like, oh, this person might need, Eric might need this or Eric might want that. And I'm gonna just go ahead and get it done. And that skill, even though it sounds very simple, it's, it goes so far. It goes so much beyond like even the appreciation that I think artists or their managers have. Um, so if I have any tips, I think it's that it's like learn to manage the basics, but then from there, learn and think about what can I do to take it even further and make it an even better seamless experience for people. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. Do you have anything you want to say to your fans as we close? Um, let's see. What do I have to say? Well, thanks, y'all, for making time. Um, I, I saw earlier in the chat that some people were like, I'm off work for this. I hope this was worth time off work for this. Um, I feel like I just talked about myself for, for 50 minutes, and I hope that's okay. Um, but thank you uh, to the Korea Tourism Organization, KTO, and the Kim, Se Kim, Kim Sejong Institute, the Sejong Language Institute, for, for helping make this happen. Um, I really, I think one thing that's really great is it's K-pop and it's Korean culture that has allowed us, all of us here, to kind of connect. And one of the first and the best ways to kind of experience Korean culture and the thing that brought us all together is through experiences such as learning the language and visiting Korea. And um, if you can't right now, you know, going to the website and, and planning ahead and, and experiencing what you can even digitally. So be sure to go to the website, to check it out, explore the resources, explore the opportunities, take a class, um, do whatever you want. But thank you to KTO and the Sejong Institute for having us here. Um, beyond that, thank you guys for being here. Please get vaccinated. Please stay safe. Please, uh, I, I think everybody's still getting used to and dealing with a new normal, a new way of life. And just know that you're not alone in it. And it's completely valid for you to feel overwhelmed or to feel stressed or to feel a certain way, whatever it is, um, in, in learning to cope and deal with this new life that we're dealing with. So uh, I just want to say that. And then also... 
for me, I have new music coming very soon. Of course, you can go stream Everything Sucks right now, um, right after this. I think it's on YouTube already if you want to go check it out um, with Fall Boy. So check that out. I have new music coming soon. It's going to come a lot sooner than you think. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. If you're a nomination, get ready. Let's get our communities going. Let's get the, the people buzzing because again, I'm a fully independent artist now. I need your help. Uh, not that you guys haven't been always with me and, and behind me, but uh, I don't know. Like for some reason, I feel more nervous about it this time. So I'm going to lean on you guys a lot. So um, in the same way that I think you guys lean on me for whatever it is, I'm going to lean on you guys just the same way. And so I'm excited to get it out to you. And um, stay tuned to everything that we do here at Dive as well. Uh, we have new shows, new people, new guests, new projects coming very soon. Very exciting things that I can't leak, but they're coming. And finally, if you guys haven't, check out Mindset, which is also a thing that we created here at Dive Studios. You can download it on your app store and we just revamped it. It's, it's beautiful, it is sexy, there are new features. Uh, boosters are completely free now, um, and there are daily quotes, which are free, and um, a lot of really cool things happening. So stay tuned to Dive Studios, stay tuned to KTO and the Sejong Institute, and to me, and I, I love you guys, and thank you, Connie, for being such a great host, and um, we're going to do this again soon. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day or night, wherever you are, and uh, yeah, goodbye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. Ciao, baby.